Привет всем. Сегодня это второй урок. Hello. This is a second lesson devoted to Base Light for the beginners by Alex Prokhorushkin. As you remember, the previous class finished by creating the workspace which we adapted for ourselves and which we can change at any moment according to our needs. Today I'd like to talk about the cursors or uh, positioners as they also called. These blue lines you can see on your timeline and we'll try to observe all the manipulations that are possible to do with the cursors in base light. We'll talk about how useful and convenient they are. Here is the mini cursor, which we previously placed here for showing the setup of the current cursor. The one which you see in your screen right here is the basic setting, which Baselight has. Here, by default, we have the viewing format. The format we chose for our project, by default, it's HD 9020 on 1080. But any time you need, you can change this format. At the same time, the cursor shows you the resolution, the format which you have on your uh, control display. And as you can have multiple cursors, each of them can have its own parameters, its own setup with its own functions. It's very convenient. OK, now our current cursor Cursor number one has HD resolution 9020 on 1080. It has viewing color space, which is Rec 709, or otherwise it's Rec 1886, 2.4 gamma. It's the one we have on a control display. Your original source may differ, your metadata also can be different, but uh, in this case, your, uh, your cursor setting should be uh, set up for the settings you are using for the whole project uh, which you have on your control monitor. This position affects only on the viewing of your control monitor. It doesn't affect on your final files render. The base light color management we will discuss in other two lessons. And I'll try to explain you shortly how this system works, how flexible and convenient it is, and how completely convenient it is, and how great uh, can it be adapted to your current tasks. Well, next we see the resolution. The parameter uh, which will show you in what resolution you can view your image. It's set on the highest as a default. And the optimized button optimizes the playback of your video file. Of course, when you deal with a red file or Alexa or any other heavy files uh, resolutions, like 6K or 8K, uh, the optimized parameter will help you a lot, because using maximal quality you can lose your performance speed, uh, which can be a problem, for example, for your clients. At the same time, you should remember that during the render, the software used the maximal quality as a default settings. So in some cases, for quick preview, you even can use a draft mode. For example, when you use a notebook, which has a low performance, but you want to try out a student version of Baselight, so you can use the draft mode. I will skip the next positions, because I'd like to talk about them separately. The button with a bell on it will show you the place where your image has clipped exposure. To tell the truth, I don't use this function much, I think it's left from the previous version of Baselight. Uh, you also have this sign, down arrow, uh, which lets you to add more positions to your cursor. You can add the mask, uh, which will show you the aspect ratio of your image, and you can change the preview of that aspect ratios. It won't change your image, it only previews in a preferred mode. 
You build the shape and the proportion of your mask in a special menu. Here you have all the possible standard masks, for example, we need 2.39. So you see that our default 16 on 9 image has a 2.39 mask overlaid. You can use a zoom or a transparency of this mask to see how much space you still have vertically. Uh, so you can transform or move your shot that will help you to find the best composition for you. Hitting R button, you will reset all the changes you have already done. So next, you also have a guide function. The DOPs know this function very well. Uh, here you can control your image without a relay mask. Then you have a, a true light. And it's a theme of separate talk as well as the color management. So I'd like to discuss them other time. And here you also have counters. They count your time codes, which are in the video files metadata. And also the time codes, which you have on your baseline timeline. R is for record, the one you have on your timeline, and the S is for source, that's the time code which came from your video files metadata. This option is very useful when you need to watch for your files during your work, uh, but when you work with the colors you may not need it. Uh, you have several options for setting up your counters. You can turn on one or many of them, even all of the parameters. Uh, you should try them, play with them and understand which option in which case you want to use. The next position is burning. Burning is very interesting function, which I use very often myself when I show the client the preliminary preview files. Here you have two default types of burning, the data dailies and the film dailies. The data dailies shows you the path where your file is located, at the bottom you can see the film light logo and the time codes, the source one and the rec one from metadata and from your base light timeline. You also can see here the metadata file name. The film dailies is a little different. Here you can edit the parameters which will be shown on your image. You can locate every option in the place you need it. So you can create some kind of template of your own burning. The burning function also is used during render. You can set up the burning now and then use it while rendering. You can add your own information, it can be your name, your logo, add some data you need. This can be done in a separate menu, uh, and uh, I would like to talk about it later. I think this function is very useful and convenient for showing or giving someone the preview files of your work. And the next function is rendering, and I'll show it later as well. And the last one is View Channel. This option is unfortunately missing in some other softs. You can choose, for example, to view your cursor in RGB or any other cursor can be only red channel or only Duma or green. It's very useful when you want to see in which channel you may have some noises. All these options you can set here or you can leave only the ones you need. When your mouse cursor is on a name, you'll see a red line crossing it and clicking on it you will delete this option from the cursor settings. You also can save the settings of this cursor hitting this gear button. Here you can save this cursor settings when this scene is opened or use the cursor when you open any scene from this project because you can have several scenes or you can clear the initial settings for this scene or for this job. So you can set the cursor in a way it's convenient to you and save it. These are the basic settings you have in any cursor. 
This light system lets you use not only one cursor, but many of them. You can have up to nine cursors. You see, I created second cursor, see the number two here, and the third one. And each of them is independent from the others. You can choose any of cursors and place it in the needed location. You can combine the cursor, hitting this gang button. Now all these three cursors will move together. You can change the color of each cursor to the suggested three colors. But you even can change these three colors as you wish. And so, uh, hitting the gang button, you will combine only the cursors with the same color. For example, now only the blue cursors will move. The cursor number 2 is different color and it doesn't move. This is very convenient and I'll explain the privileges of this way of working. Now let's delete all the cursors I don't need. I'm intentionally using only mouse or pen now almost not touching the keyboard, but I recommend you to learn the hotkeys and to use them because it will make your work easier, faster and more flexible. Ok, now I'm creating the first cursor and now I want to place the second cursor on the position 7. Now I will use several cursors at the same time for our job. For example, I want to compare the video clip I placed here with the other clip I inserted later. Placed here with the other clip I inserted later. For that I am creating the second cursor and replace it on a position above the first clip. Now we have two cursors. You can toggle between them, hitting key 1 or 2 for first and second cursors. Now we combine them using the gang button and now they move together. But uh, we can see only one of them, the first and the second one. To see the both cursors at the same time, uh, you should hit F2 button. And now see what's happening. This function is very useful when you need to compare the reference files with the edit code you were sent in the XML, EDL or AAF. And you can check if you did the comfort right according to your reference file. It's a great function. At the same time, you can create one more project or scene, or maybe import another project or scene, and there you will have one more cursor, the third one. And the great thing is that you have an opportunity to merge these cursors, to compare them from the different projects and scenes. It is useful if you have several projects of the same work, but they're different by their editing or coloring. That will make your work easier. And as you remember, each of these cursors can have its own settings. For example, we have set up for the first cursor in the way we need it, and for the second cursor we can change the viewing color space. For example, let's change uh, super RGB to 0.2 gamma and also let's put a mask here like 2.35 we also can view only green channel great now you see we have two cursors and they are totally different uh, and you can move the second cursor lower on your timeline. And you'll get the same image with different settings. 
The first cursor shows you the image with the setup settings and the second one shows you the same image with the different settings. And you can use the situation in the way you need. So you can preview how it would be if you use some filters or settings. Cursor is very flexible option. It lets you easily find any part of your clip, even if it is very, very long. I usually create the third cursor and change its color for separating it from the previous two. Uh, I always do this during my work, because my second cursor is always on my reference file and the first one is always on the lowest level of timeline for viewing all the changes I have done. And the third one I use for finding the needed scene to check if it's ok and to see how it looks, if it matches the work I am doing right now. This technique is very convenient. I recommend you to practice it on cursors and I'm sure that you'll enjoy the way this works. Because in the other softs you don't have this flexibility that you have in base light. I know that, for example, Nucoda has very good flexible cursors, but there are only three of them. But there are possibilities uh, that uh, only a uh, base light gives you. The possibility of using cursors from different scenes and even different projects, comparing them, viewing all the cursors at the same time, even all the nine of them. Let me show you. You'll see the first gang of cursor move, here's the second gang, and here's the first one moving. Hitting play, we see all the cursors work at the same time. This would be synchronous even if you have cursors from the different projects. Ok, in this lesson I shortly introduced you how to work with cursors. The main thing to remember is that cursor previews the color space in which your control display is set up. It's very important. Your cursor has to show you the color profile of your control display. That way you work in an appropriate way and your client will always be pleased by the result. That's all for today. Thanks for your attention. See you soon.